Greetings! In today's video, I want to take a look at the special set of three paints released by Schmincke in 2018. What is special about these? Well, all three are made from semi-precious stone, which is not a common occurrence for Schmincke. The colors are lapis lazuli, red opalite, and green porphyry. They are a limited edition product, only available in 5 ml tubes. I wanted to take a look at these for many reasons. One of them is sheer curiosity. Another is to be able to compare professionally made stone pigment paints to the ones I make myself. While I don't have green porphyry or red opalite pigment, I've been able to make genuine lapis lazuli paint. Kremer, the main place where one can find pigments, seems to indicate that celadonite is similar to the green porphyry pigment and their opal red would be similar to the red opalite. I have a dot of celadonite made by Ame from Eventually Everything Mixes, so I'll have that and my own lapis lazuli to compare with these. There is another element I appreciate from this special set, and it's that Schmincke is really honest and transparent about these paints. They don't claim that these will be super bright and lovely, or harness the beauty of the stones they're made from. They tell you exactly what to expect. Reading from the official information about these. Red Opalite As a semi-precious stone, excavated in Arizona in the US, opalite is the pre-stage of the gemstone opal. As a watercolor, it is a light, warm red-brown with semi-opaque character. Lapis Lazuli the lapis lazuli from Chile has been milled in a very time-consuming and expensive process to a very fine pigment. The semi-precious stone, one of the oldest gem and pigment stones, has been processed to a watercolor with a dark grey-blue, dull and semi-opaque character. Green Porphyry This semi-precious stone from the Côte d'Azur, France, belongs to the green earth stones and ever since has been used rather for the pigment production than as a gemstone. As a watercolor, it is an olive dull color with a semi-opaque character as well. From experience, I expect these to dry quite hard, so I will not be putting them in pans. I'll keep them in the tube and squeeze some fresh paint when I need it. Also, as these pigments tend to be heavier, I expect them to have settled, so I gotta mix them out in some way before painting with them. I used toothpicks and that went relatively well. It's always a bit messy to try and stir up paint in tubes, but I was able to get it somewhat mixed. When it came to swatching the colors, I found out right away about the low tinting strength of these colors. To get any kind of strength in my swatches, I had to use more paint. Also, the paints have a slightly gooey texture that I think is from the gum arabic binder. I might have not successfully mixed them as well as I should. The easiest color to use was the green and the weakest seems to be the red. The one with the strongest granulation is obviously the blue. They create nice colors when mixed together, but as they are not strong colors, the resulting mixes are equally lightweight. The other thing I wanted to swatch out is the handmade paints made from similar pigments to the paints offered by Schmincke. 
I have Ame's lovely Saladanite to compare to the green porphyry, and my own lapis lazuli to compare to Schminke's. I let everything dry before taking a second look at all the swatches. First up is the comparison swatches. Overall, the Schminke colors are a bit more muted than the handmade paints I had. It's very light in the case of the green and more noticeable when it comes to the blue. As for their texture, they are fairly similar. The Schminke swatches didn't change much from wet to dry. The only thing you can't really see on camera is that the red dries really rough on the paper. It has a greeny, sandpaper-like feel to the touch. I was about to clean up my space, but I first wanted to show you my water for these swatches, how clear it stayed. The pigments, being heavier, stone-sourced particles, sank to the bottom and the water is almost completely clean. And now, what to make of these paints? They are definitely not for everyone. They are expensive, muted, and don't have a lot of tinting strength. They are also a bit different to use. I hesitated to get these because I couldn't think of any use for them on a regular basis. I was also very curious, and ultimately my curiosity won. I have yet to experiment more with these and see if they work with other colors to create two-toned granulation effects. I was happy to test these out from a paint maker's point of view as well. Overall, I don't regret purchasing these unique colors. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, bye bye.